Hi everyone. The National Center for Social Research is an independent organization which tracks public opinion in the UK. And last week it published its 40th annual report on British social attitudes. Its key findings are that there is greater acceptance of non-traditional family forms and sexual relationships than there has ever been before. Most people nowadays think it's okay for a couple to live together outside marriage. Same-sex relationships are okay. Single parenting is okay, etc. Also, most people think women should have the right to abortion in some, if not all, circumstances. But, quote, attitudes towards people who are transgender have become markedly less liberal over the past three years. The report says that the number of those who say they are not at all prejudiced against transgender people fell from 82% in 2016 to 64% at the end of last year. Those who admitted to being either very prejudiced or a little prejudiced in 2016 totaled 17%. That figure has almost doubled to 33%. And I'm going to say, although I've no way of proving it, that I don't think those figures indicate the true extent of opposition to gender ideology and so-called trans rights because of how the question is phrased. The term prejudiced, defined as having a preconceived opinion that is not based on reason or actual experience has a very negative connotation. I think it's likely that there will be people who refute any accusation of prejudice, and rightly so, but who can see the harm in gender ideology. And that, as I say, it's only a suspicion on my part, but I think it's a reasonable one that is bolstered by the fact that only 30% of those surveyed said that a trans person should be permitted to change the sex on their birth certificate if they wanted to, a fall from 58% in 2016. By the way, the definition of a transgender person used in the survey is vague. People who are transgender have gone through all or part of a process, including thoughts or actions, to change the sex they were described as at birth to the gender they identify with or intended to. This might include by changing their name, wearing different clothes, taking hormones, or having gender reassignment surgery. So quite a low bar really. All you had to do to merit the label transgender is have some thoughts and change your name. That's how I understand it. They don't specify that a transgender person means someone who has undergone any part of medical transition, and it is known that this does factor into people's opinions, especially whether a man has had genital surgery or not. So I have a few thoughts I'd like to share in this short video. Firstly, it is, in my opinion, fundamentally wrong to frame the fact that fewer people want to force women to accept men into their spaces, sports and occupations as less liberal. Since when has liberal meant appeasing the feelings of a tiny minority of men by going along with what they want and disregarding the feelings of a much larger proportion of women? That's not liberalism. It is the invention of this notion of trans rights and framing them as on a par with gay rights in particular, but also alongside the rights of other minorities that has led to this false perception of transgenderism as being a civil rights issue in and of itself. And it isn't. Now, I know that that statement I've just made will be deliberately misinterpreted to mean that I think trans-identifying people should suffer discrimination and violence, etc. I don't mean that at all. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, I think people should be free to express themselves as they like and do what they like as long as they don't negatively impact on 
anyone else's mental, emotional, or physical well-being. Unlike the haters promoting the gender loony tunes, I do not support violence against anyone, and I am not responsible for violence against anyone. Those of you who accuse me of killing trans people or driving them to suicide by telling the truth as I see it, by giving my opinion, you need to grow the F up. If you make a claim, provide your reasoning, provide your evidence, and we'll have a discussion. Well, just shut the hell up. Have you not noticed that you are not changing my mind or intimidating me into silence by levelling these ridiculous accusations at me? I also want to say that, to me, a sympathetic and supportive response to transgenderism as a phenomenon from liberal, progressive people is understandable as a knee-jerk reaction. If you perceive it, as I once did, as gay men and lesbians who feel so unhappy, so horrified with their sexed bodies that they are prepared to take really drastic measures and make irreversible surgical changes to their appearance, then you may well think that the kind thing to do, the liberal thing to do, is to accept them and humour them as what they so clearly wish they are. In my experience, those who have not yet woken up to the truth of transgenderism still believe that all trans-identifying men are gay and they don't think about trans-identifying women at all. When I've informed people that most of these men who LARP as women are straight, they flatly refuse to believe it. I've had people say, nah, that makes no sense. I remember my hairdresser, who's a straight middle-aged bloke, stopping mid-cut in disbelief and saying, really? Are you sure they aren't just saying that? Of course, people like him, Mr. Average, have never heard of autogynophilia. I mean, who has heard of it if they've taken no interest in the gender stuff? And they've never heard of trans widows and their children either. It is still possible to exist in this country and be entirely oblivious to what is going on, if you choose to be. If you hear the term transgender and just switch off because... It's nothing to do with you and you're not interested, but it is becoming more difficult to avoid and that is reflected in the results of the Social Attitudes Survey. So why would people in the UK become more liberal in general about major social issues, but less liberal about just one? What has happened in the last seven years, and especially in the last three years, to affect such a loss of support? The answer is that people know more. Of course, that is not something the gender loons are prepared to admit. Interestingly, the first year in which these questions about transgenderism were asked in the survey, 2016, happens to be the same year in which one Nancy Kelly took up the post of Deputy Chief Executive and Director of Policy Research at the same organisation that conducts these surveys, the National Centre for Social Research. And she was there until 2020 when she became CEO of Stonewall and she stood down from that post a couple of months ago. How did she respond to the news? This is the press-driven moral panic bearing fruit. Years of relentless toxic coverage and political manipulation is making us less tolerant and less supportive of a marginalised community. And those sentiments were echoed by many others. A moral panic? What does that mean exactly? A very concise definition I found says, moral panics are irrational fears that have been spread and exaggerated by the media. I think that is exactly how Nancy Kelly and others like her mean it. And it is a very curious claim to make in light of what has actually been happening. Things I did not know about before I hit peak trans all those years ago and started taking a real interest include the fact that I 
39-year-old man had been selected to represent New Zealand in women's weightlifting. He soon cheated a woman out of an international title. Major peak transing incident for me, and it wasn't to be the only time he did so, of course. Shame, shame, shame on New Zealand and on every other country or indeed every other sports body that has since allowed men to compete in women's sports. The public don't like that. I did not know that Katie Dolotovsky had violated two little girls in two different supermarket toilets, only to be rewarded by being sent to a female offenders hostel. I didn't know that women's refuges, or shelters as they're called in the US, were allowing men into them, into some of them. I didn't know that women were being raped by male prisoners in the female estate. I didn't know that lesbian spaces, quote, support groups, social groups, bars, forums, you name it, had been hijacked by heterosexual men who claimed to be lesbians. I didn't know that people were being no-platformed in universities because they disagreed with gender ideology. I didn't know about the attempts to suppress academic analysis and research. I didn't know that some schools were indoctrinating children into gender ideology, and I certainly didn't know anything about puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and even surgeries being performed on people who hadn't even reached full adulthood. I didn't know anything about transition regret. But I found out about these things because they were reported in the media and shared on Twitter and other social media platforms. Why wouldn't they be? They happened. And it is in the public interest to report on them, just as it's in the public interest to report on the hate directed against anyone brave enough to speak out against it, especially high profile people like J.K. Rowling, Graham Linehan, Roisin Murphy, whoever. Because that hate is indicative of just how pernicious and sinister this movement is. Why is Nancy Kelly calling this coverage toxic? It's the ideology that is toxic, not the media reporting the truth about it. And she and her organisation played a massive role in promoting it. And because the media, in this country at least, have been reporting the truth, more and more people are waking up and turning against the ideology, those who promote it, and unfortunately some of those who don't. I think it's sad, but inevitable that any trans-identifying people who were quietly trying to live their lives and wanted no part of the bullying, the violence, the attempts to intimidate, silence and ruin people's livelihoods are likely to suffer from the backlash provoked by people like Nancy Kelly and the rest of their cult. This is not the press or people in public life demonising, as she says in her next post. It is the press reporting accurately and a few people in public life calling it out because most people in public life are too cowardly. I'll show you the last post in her thread, but first I'll show you one of these. And honestly, shame on every institution and individual that has driven this and is profiting from it. <laughs> Beggar's belief. Toby Young of the Free Speech Union suggested that if trans rights activists want to advance their cause, they should set out their stall in the public square and engage with people like Kathleen Stock, J.K. Rowling and Helen Joyce in debate and discussion. Too late, mate. I mean, the notion that these activists are capable of engaging in debate like grown-ups is obviously flawed. If they'd been able to do so, they would have done so in the first place. But their mantra from the outset has been no debate, while their strategy has been to try to silence any voices of dissent. And now it's coming back to bite them on the arse. As Toby says... 
screaming and shouting at anyone who disagrees with you, no platforming them, reporting them to the police, trying to get them fired, etc. Obviously isn't working. But of course, the lesson the trans rights activists will take from the findings of the British Social Attitude Survey is that they need to double down on these tactics. Indeed, because that is all they have. And that is why ultimately they will lose though I don't care to speculate just how much more suffering they will cause to decent people in the meantime. That's all. Thanks for watching. Bye.